Welcome to Dipping Milk in Cookies with your hosts, Garrett Cookie Smith and Michael Milk and Segovia. to uh, episode 22 of Dipping Milk and Cookies. I am Garrett, Cookie Commander Smith. With me as always, Michael, Master Milker, Segovia. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm good. How yeah. about you? I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, uh, despite, and as much as I hate to fucking add to the hysteria... Uh, coronavirus. It's it's all all we talk about nowadays. It's the big deal. Um, which you know, I'm pretty sure I've already had it. Uh, I've done all of the research. I've well, not all of the research, but I've done enough research to know that the symptoms are chest cold. It's like a chest cold with a fever, uh, a runny nose, um, chills. It's just like the flu. It's just like the flu, which makes mm-hmm. it that much more dangerous because you don't really know right. that you actually, you could potentially have it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I really got, man. I got one, one little note in here regarding work, but obviously the NBA season being postponed. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. The NHL season being uh, suspended MLB. Now. MLB got suspended too? Yep, they oh, pushed their shit back at least two weeks. Uh, yeah. They canceled the NCAA tournament for yeah. men and women. Yeah, I'm bummed. Yeah. Um, dude, everything. NASCAR's going to run this weekend with uh, with no people. Uh, I just saw too that uh, the PGA Tour canceled the Players' Championship mm-hmm. and they pushed their shit back for a while yet. Yeah. It's yeah. hitting everything. It's hitting yeah. everything. Yeah, I honestly... I. <laughs> I said it earlier today before they actually made like all the shit uh, official and I know I even wrote the note down in here better luck next season bucks <laughs> yeah yeah I wrote that I shit that. down dude yesterday and I was like I, I didn't believe it at first and then I googled it and realized that it was for real and then I really laughed hard at that post yeah <clears throat> so again just real quick folks uh, to address the 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 hall sound that we have going on right now probably let me turn we're recording in your mother's room. Oh, there it is. There it is. Let me turn that up. Turn that down. A little bit here. Um, we're recording another guest interview episode. So we have the one mic, the, the communal mic, com- communal mic set up. So it's going to sound a little goofy, but hopefully I have the levels right. Uh, just want to throw that out there. I'm excited about tonight. Tonight's going to be a good, good episode. Uh, but we're going to go over, again, I... I have the uh, the coronavirus. It sucks. I hate fucking talking about it. I really do. Well, the coronavirus has caused like this uh, this chain reaction for a lot of things worldwide. It's called mass hysteria. Um, you know, Italy shut down a lot of their shit. Uh, Trump shut down flights travel, from travel Europe. Ban, travel ban. Except the UK, they could still come here because you know we're all best friends and whatever the fuck. I know a guy that's actually he was in Greece. He was touring in Greece and had 24 hours to catch a connecting flight back to the States. Where when he gets back, he still isn't even back, but when he gets back, he's going to have to self-induce a 14-day quarantine. (laughs) It's fucking nuts, dude. That's why, like, everybody right now is like, oh, God, I think I might be sick. I'm going to go to the fucking doctor. Don't. And it sounds sounds totally ass-backwards, and I understand it. However, people, I want you to understand, if you go to the doctor and you even give them an ounce of a suspicion that you may or may not have the coronavirus, you're not leaving the hospital. You're not leaving the doctor. They are, no, 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 they're not, they're not going to fucking, they're not going to give you the... Yep. Here, just come behind this curtain. Stevie, they're not going to give you the Stevie <laughs> double tap behind the ear, but they will keep you in quarantine. They're not going to let you leave. 
So right. keep Ch- that in mind. Keep that in mind. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but then again, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all I out. do know is everybody that is, uh, again, in mass hysteria over uh, the coronavirus, do some research, do a little reading, and obviously you take it with a grain of salt. It's the internet. You can't really believe everything off the internet. But read more than one fucking article. Don't click the one that's on Facebook. Don't, don't even do uh, this. Don't even click on anything besides going to the Joe Rogan episode that I forgot the guy's name <laughs> that he had on there from, uh, I think it was the CDC or it was WHO. One of the two, probably, probably wrong. The CDC. No, 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 probably the CDC. Uh, but the dude like lays it all out there. And he's like, you know, expect this to be 10 to 15 times worse than the common flu. Uh yeah, looking at like 96 million people infected and probably around 480,000 deaths, which, I mean, yeah, that's still a pretty big number. And I forget, I forget if he said that that's worldwide or if that was just here in the states. No, there's. No. <laughs> well, yeah. Do you think about how many people got infected in China? How many people are living in in the United States? Like less than 400 million people. Okay, so what was that number you spit out? 96 million cases infected. Oh, so that's sorry, probably like, like that's like 20% of the population gets it. Yeah. And about 480,000 people die. It's a dead wood. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, well, I'm I mean. sorry, not sorry. But it, it's, <laughs> that's what it is, though. It, it's it's usually the, the older you are, the higher risk you are to die from the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that the 2%. 2.1% of the cases in China were only children. I mean, I shouldn't say only, but... Uh, a good chunk of them. 2.1% out of everybody was infected. So it's like, all right, two out of 100 people that get infected are a child. Mm-hmm. But the children have a higher chance of Mortality resisting rate. it. Yeah. No, no, not... Children aren't dying from this. Children aren't really getting sick from this. It's the adults. The older you are, the worse See, off you are. That's what I read, is the older and the infants. No. No, the infants, they're, they're, I mean, they're getting vaccines they just, constantly. They just got their immune system. Yeah. And they're constantly getting vaccines. The ones that are getting vaccines on their scheduled yeah. basis. Mike, this is a new All right. virus, but. It's not new. I mean, <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> you're it's right. not it's new a, Let me rephrase, counselor. It's an election year. <laughs> so, like, this is the new disease for, for the election. I'm sorry. I apologize, my friend. Either way, this kid's getting really hot and bothered right no, now. No, no, no. I just actually, no, 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 I, maybe no, no, no. I, what I saw was wrong. And I don't want to be talking on here and people be like, dude, this guy's a fucking retard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's fine. Easy. It's fine. TikTok. TikTok. Well, no, that's, uh, that's trademarked over there by uh, IMH. Yeah, well, you just <laughs> you cited it. How many times do I have to say it? As long as you cite it, you're all right. Due diligence. What's up, Tom? What's up, Water Champ? <laughs> <laughs> uh, while you're doing your fucking nerd research, unless yeah. you're done right now. Well, I'm trying to find something. Go ahead. Okay, what you so, got? Uh, so at work, all right, just to paint the picture. Oh, right here. No, Coronavirus is mysteriously sparing kids and killing the elderly. Understanding why it may help defeat the virus. And this is from the Washington Post by William Wan and Joel Achenbach. Ah, him back. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Or, yeah, gentlemen. All right, all right. So, what were you saying? No, I was wait. I was trying to kill time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fucking okay. article. What's your next and point? And now you're gonna put your phone down. I just wanted to tell you that it wasn't really affecting children. And you're like, so you yeah. read the title of an article off the Washington Yeah, because we can keep moving on. And that's good enough. Yeah. You're a real piece of shit. Yeah. Why? I cited where it was from. People want to fucking <laughs> check it out. They can check it out, dude. Washington Post, check it out. Unreal. I don't know what you're so upset about. Right. Right. <laughs> fucking take no, my no. beers and go home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, no, no, no. So at work, um, obviously working at Quad, we print magazines. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and I, I work in shipping. So, like, I'm on the opposite side of the action that I'm about to talk about. But they, they come through my radio channel on, uh, you know, on my truck. <laughs> So all the guys that work on the actual printing lines, you know, they'll, they'll call in, it'll be like a doot, doot, doot. It's like go for paper, 
and it's just like the guy space balls guy, beep, boop, beep. yeah pretty, pretty much pretty much pretty much it'll be like a deep dude and then a dial tone and then somebody will pick up just like go for paper and, and then all of a sudden you'll hear somebody on the other end like yeah this is the uh this is the 101 uh running out of paper need another roll for a job blah 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 uh and then the person on the that's receiving that call will always ask always ask how much time do you have how much time you got how much time you got because these rolls are fucking six and a half feet wide they're yeah. big rolls of paper so it takes some time for the whole thing to roll out and that's kind of like my dick. Baby, <laughs> 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 you're gonna have to give me at least a th- tight ten. <laughs> I gotta unroll this. <laughs> it's starting to become spring. It takes more. It takes more time. <laughs> 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 okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, no. The guy will always say, "How much time you got?" And then the, the other person calling for the, the next role will be like, well, you know, I got 25 minutes. I got 15 minutes. I got 45 minutes. There's this one character <laughs> that always calls in. <laughs> Go for paper. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, uh, and then they'll, they'll get the number, the, 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 the fucking printer number. Uh, the running job... Ba 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 ba. Uh, we need two more rolls, and then the guy's just like, "All right, uh, job number, okay. Uh, well, how much time you got?" And then the guy was like, "Okay, thank you." And, just, <laughs> and he just fucking hangs up on the guy every single time. I'm and I'm telling you, I've worked there since uh, uh, what is that? November? Something no, like, that. like September. September. Yeah. Either way, I've worked there for a few months now. And I've heard that fucking same guy at least, at least five times and every single time. And it's like a highlight of my day because as soon as I hear his voice, I'll turn my radio up. Because <laughs> I'm just waiting for the, just like, uh, uh, with this job, this machine. It's just like, how much time you got? Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, wish, I really wish I could be in that office, in that paper office, to be that guy that's getting that call just like, mother fucker every goddamn time i just wish i knew who that was i really do i really do wish i knew who it was that was just click hanging up on those fucking guys it's like pivotal that's pivotal information obviously the paper type and the job number very very imperative but <laughs> dude as soon as it's like how much time you got all right, do I have time to like do this other job or do I have time to or do I have to come to you right now Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the only other note I had in my notebook here, so let me go ahead. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> um, so uh, we are going to touch with our sponsor for this week, and then we are going to get back to it with our guest. Support for Dipping Milk and Cookies comes from Angry Beard Boards. Who doesn't love playing a good old game of cornhole? I know the Cookie Commander and Master Milker do, that's for sure. Bags is absolutely an American tailgating pastime that goes good with just about anything. Sporting events, cookouts, parties of any kind. If you got some sun and some friends over, then it's time to grab the boards. And where better to get those boards than from Angry Beard Boards. Quality, handmade cornhole boards and bags made to order. I've seen some of these custom bad boys, and let me tell you, they are quality boards. Custom regulation size, tailgating size, and kid sizes available. All wood, hand-painted or stained, with many options available upon request. Right now, when our listeners use the code DMC at checkout, you will receive $20 off the set. That's a pretty sweet deal if you ask me. Spring, right around the corner, so don't wait. Act now, again, when our listeners use the code DMC at checkout, you will receive $20 off of the set. So be sure to swing by their Facebook page for more information or call 414-881-4520. 
Again, that number is 414-881-4520. Angry Beard Boards, where the cornholing gets mean. All right, we are back. Our guest today is a touring singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and overall a badass mamma jam. <laughs> uh, you know him from the band's Whiskey of the Dam, the Andrew David Weber Band, amongst others. Please welcome Andrew David Weber. Thank you, my friend, for showing up. That's a big thing for us. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at it lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I know you're a busy fucking guy, so we'll, uh, we'll jump right into it. Um, obviously, being such a, uh, a multifaceted musician, what originally got you into music um i don't exactly know how to answer i get asked it all the time i'm um, sure i'm sure but uh I, I always tell the story of how when i was like 10 years old um my mother asked if uh my sister or myself wanted to take music lessons mm -hmm. and uh I told her, yes, I want to take guitar lessons. I want to play the electric guitar because I think every little kid wants to be a rock star. And yeah, that's kind of how that started. Yeah. And then um, we had a keyboard in the house for my sister who was taking piano lessons. Uh, she eventually decided it was not her thing. But I started poking around on it. Tickling and, in the ivories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tickling the ivories. I started doing that. And uh, that started really resonating with me. Um, and then it became an obsession that I just started learning whatever instruments I could, whether it be something I got at a rum to sale or uh, be like, hey, mom, you know, can I have this or whatever. My mother was always extremely supportive. Um, and my dad is Whiskey the Dam's biggest fan. So I think uh... that's, that's, that's <laughs> one thing I, I, I've always envied because, like, obviously, Chris, our, uh, our drummer, his parents have always been super, super, super uh, supportive. Yeah. I mean, every every show that first year they were at basically every fucking show is crazy. So that's always obviously a very good variable. Yeah. Uh, trying to become a musician if you got a parent who doesn't mind the noise. That yeah, my my dad was. definitely came around on that one. My uh, <laughs> my mom was all about it. I think right from the get go, and then uh, I think drums were the only time I ever irritated anybody. You mm -hmm. know, picturing a kid learning drums. Is... Did you have an electric kit or uh, a traditional? Uh, it was an acoustic kit. Okay. Um, <laughs> but like I said, my parents were extremely uh, supportive. They got it for me. So. Well, yeah. No, no, no. That obviously <laughs> that says a whole fucking lot. Um, how would you describe? Like, obviously, this is when did when did you start really like playing music? Like, when did you start playing instruments? At so, what age? I think I was like ten years old. Ten years old. So. Ten years old, you started playing music. Uh, at what age did you become like really engaged into learning music? Because there's a difference between like just playing the instrument yeah. and then like really showing interest. Um, I think I, I took to it pretty quickly. I mean, I, I was starting bands before I even learned okay. uh, an instrument, which I think was a sign to me that I wanted to play. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I remember being um, in grade school before I even took guitar lessons or whatever, and I wanted to start a band. I wanted to write poems, turn them into songs, and sing. Mm -hmm. And I, I came across some of the lyrics that I wrote when I was a child recently. They weren't very good. I had a song about <laughs> electricity that uh, oh, I, I, I had learned how electricity works or the basics of it. And I wrote, yeah. I wrote about it yeah. as a song, you know, because I, I had no real problems to write about. <laughs> <laughs> so you're fucking yeah, cool. yeah. 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 Right. Just a bill sitting on Capitol. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, mean, I feel like that was kind of my writing style. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I would, I would just, you know, I could have written for a lot of those educational videos. And that's I think fucking, that's fucking that's great. A missed opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so obviously, coming into your own as a musician over the years, how would you describe the music you typically, uh, like, typically create? Like, what's your, uh, what's your creative process, so to speak? Um, so my creative process largely involves taking life experiences writing them into poems, but assigning the dialogue to characters that I make up in my head. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a coping mechanism or what, no, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah, but I, mean, uh, whatever. I always kind of envision um, other people, you know, characters that I've made up going through this and how they would interact with each other. So a lot of them, a lot of the songs I write are actually a dialogue between two people, which is why some of them have very contradictory lyrics. I have lyrics. noticed that. I have noticed that. Yeah. Um, I listened to your, I listened to the whole album today. Right on, man. I, I appreciate I had, that. Uh, I had to refresh myself. 
But uh, but yeah, that is definitely I get that. Like, yeah, it's almost like an argument. I've have only recently started um, writing duets because I feel like you know talking to myself on every album is probably a, <laughs> you know hello me it's me again. <laughs> got a lot of that going on. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I don't know. So so again, life experience. Uh, and then just trying to frame it towards, well, not necessarily frame it. You say you, obviously a lot of your music starts out at poem first. Yeah. Um, how does, how does it work when you write a poem? Because I'm obviously, I'm a guitar player. I'm no lyricist, but like, how does it, how do you translate between a poem and then putting it to music? So I don't always know what's going to be a song. Um, I just write and write and write. And eventually, if a melody hits me with while I'm writing something, it becomes a song. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I have tons of notebooks full of things that are just poems or even just thoughts that I randomly wrote down. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was gonna say the cadences between the two. Obviously, you yeah. know, delivering it as a poem compared to delivering it as a song, uh, the timing, the tempo, it's different. So that 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 was just something that uh, that grabbed me. I got a question. So. When you uh, come up with um, a, like a, a guitar riff, or you still do the drums too, or yeah. okay, so anytime you come up with like a beat or a rhythm of any kind, do you think to yourself like I have a song or a poem that would fit this? That happens all the time. Yeah. Um, alternatively, sometimes I'll create a beat and almost like a vocal cadence will come to mind. I won't actually have. Uh, words for it, but I'll you know I'll, I'll know that I'm gonna go da 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 right. So then I'll actually, in some cases, I will write the music first. Usually it's the other way around, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there are definitely times when I'm just jamming on guitar and I'm like, oh, I gotta write something to this. Okay, thanks. Um, obviously you're a musician. You're you're the musician. You you understand what I'm saying? Like you. You're, you're a fucking steely-eyed missile man. You can play the drums, you can play the guitar, you can play the fucking keys, you can play a lot of fucking instruments. Obviously, you've done, you've already done a lot of, um, a lot of collaborations. Yeah. Who, top, top three, who would be your, your most sought-out collaborations? Um, so dead, dead or alive, dead or alive. So if I were to reach out to somebody, or if I could collaborate with anybody... Mm -hmm. Um, I want to collaborate with Claudio Sanchez from Coheed and Cambria. Yeah, okay. Really right. badly. I okay. think that would be pretty epic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I could definitely see that. I think there's a reason that our writing styles are similar. I've been listening to their music for so long that I think a lot of that influence has made its way into mine. Mm -hmm. And I've already been that person that likes to create characters in my head. He's got the Emery Wars comic series, which I don't know if you've read Story that. Lines. Storylines. Yeah. The, the whole album is a story. Yeah, and it's like nine albums long now. It's, it's good. And <laughs> yeah. I've got all the books that I've yeah. published for it, and the books are really good. They're not half-assed at all. Like I tell people I'm a huge Star Wars geek, and I think this is better than Star Wars. I want to see film adaptations yeah, it's a, it's of this entire universe. It's a saga. I mean, there are over 70 planets in this un universe. He's really put some thought into this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so in light of the fact that I just listened to The Sound of Experience... Uh, which is Andrew's release from 2019. It's a fantastic album. You can find it on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, Google Play, YouTube. You can find it on just about any major platform. Uh, what's out of that album? What's your favorite song to perform? Um, well, that's a tough one. So taking the voice of experience as a record, um, I think I like rocking out to Do You Still See Me the most. Um, I love playing invisible for a crowd just because if it's a new crowd, nobody expects the dun 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 mm -hmm. dun 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 and everything just jumps up. Mm -hmm. And I love watching people's reaction to that the first time. It's like it's the same reaction every time. It's just oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I love it. So for crowd songs, do you still see me in invisible? Are definitely uh, the go tos, I guess. If you know, if I've got a a segment where I'm going to play one song with the band. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It's going to be probably one of those. Um, in the same token, I do have a favorite song that isn't one of those songs. Actually, my favorite song to listen to or to play is Losing Hope. Um, it's in my notes. <laughs> right, huh? Losing Hope, man. That song, 
that song for me, just because, like, when the album drops, like, I listen to it, truth be told, I didn't pay too, too much attention to it, but, like, obviously now, having you be, having you here, like, you know, that makes me sound really shallow, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're fine. It's, <laughs> uh, but I listened to <laughs> the whole fucking album shit. again today. Dude, did you listen to Addiction? Yeah, exactly. No. Nope. Yeah, stay. I did not. <laughs> I go back to sleep. Uh, no, 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 Losing Hope, that, that song, it, there's something about it, the beginning of it is just so, it's ground, it's very grounded, and it's very clean, but then all of a sudden, two-thirds of the way through the tune, like, oh shit, oh shit, it actually gets a little bit, it picks up, it picks up. And we start and screaming by the end of it. I was just about to say, it's real <laughs> dirty, you actually hear Andrew, like, screaming, like, really screaming, and it's, that's, yeah, uh, what did I say? Um, how would you know? And 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 losing hope, man. Those are the two, in my opinion, the two best tracks off that album. But the whole fucking thing is good. The whole thing is good. I appreciate that, man. Um, but yeah, uh, how uh, how do you feel, especially being like an actual full time musician? How do you feel the internet has m- impacted the music business? Um. So I know a lot of people freak out about it. And just pull the it. fucking beer out. God damn it. <laughs> Cough drop, beer. Just fucking pull it out and open it. God it always damn. reminds me that uh, there's an ep- there's a scene on one of the Family Guy episodes where Peter is trying to eat those chips quietly up in the attic with a drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, can I try one of those? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. See, Garrett? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, anywho. Um, so, internet so, music business. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you gotta talk while you pop. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, internet music business. Um, the way that the internet has impacted the music business, a lot of people have kind of freaked out because it's made music more accessible. So on one hand, if you know how to promote yourself, it's really easy to distribute your own material now. It used to not be, yeah, uh, quite so easy to do so. On the other hand, actual music sales uh, overall are down. Um, but weirdly enough, vinyl has, has popped up. It actually outs, it outsells huge, CDs. Huge research. You know. And I mean, vinyl, it really does sound the best. It's, it's yeah, very it's, pure. Yeah, it's very organic, yeah. Um, but I, I like, uh, what Iron Maiden did when everything kind of shifted over, um, to digital. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't mind streaming, even illegal streaming. Um, they were just like, cool, people are listening to it. We just got to figure out where Spoken. they're listening to yeah, it. Yeah, you got to track it. Yeah, so they, they did that. They got a team together, and they were like, oh, man, uh, South America loves Iron Maiden. And so they just booked a few South American Fuck tours. Daddy. They went They went down there, <laughs> and then they, they, I think in the first, like, week, they did over a million in merch sales or something like that. Jesus like, you know, fucking Christ. Was, <laughs> I was just saying. That's what I was just saying. Merch, so dude, all merch. these people were, were, they were ripping the music from the internet for free, not paying for it. And, you, and so you had guys like Metallica that were like trying to fight that so yeah. hard. Lars. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, you had people on one hand that were trying to fight it so hard, and then you have Iron Maiden that's like, hey, we're not going to stop the internet. The internet is bigger than us. We, we cannot fight it. This is the entire world here. Um, so what we should do is adapt to it. Mm-hmm. And so that's when they decided to just fly themselves down, literally fly themselves down because Bruce Dickinson has a damn plane. Um, <laughs> right. I fucking hope so. All Must be 80s, nice. All that eighties fucking money, eighties glam metal. Yeah. Money. Um, and then, yeah, they just you know they sold tickets, they sold merchandise, and that was they came back to prominence very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, then they released I can't remember uh, the name of it, but it was like that double album that they put out. And ever since then, they've been killing it, kicking ass again. Yeah, killing it. But it's like that's just just shows you that no matter who you are in music, you know, like a lot of these old bands thought they were gonna die off, but Iron Maiden just like. Just not us. Yeah, it's <laughs> not just, my shift. Yeah, yeah. And that. now everybody's pretty much come around to it. I just remember them being one of the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Let me let me rephrase my question, Counselor. Um, as far as your music, because um, uh, we were just having this conversation the other night at the hall. Like I, I asked you what you do. You know, what's your job? What do you do outside of this? And you were like. This is it. This is it. This is it. (laughs) Like, this is what I do. So, uh, being a full-time musician, like, I would consider myself a part-time musician because I have a full-time job and I play in a band and everything. Clearly, you don't. You have the full-time job. You just, you you work 
you do your own you do your own thing with whiskey and you know the Andrew uh, David Weber band. Uh, you, you do the the open mics at the hall. Um, I that's that's why I wrote down the question. Is just like I I understand just being the part time musician that it's so hard. It's so hard yeah. to sell the brand. Um, so like, obviously you jumped into it um, after after the fact, so to speak. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, how do you feel that, that that really affects your in in? So I think the way it affects me is I don't so much focus on selling the music itself. Um, right now I am just because you know you got coronavirus canceling everything, which I'll talk about a little yeah, later. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we'll get to that um, for sure. Fucking but, uh, goddamn yeah. election year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in general, I focus more on getting myself into bars or into venues <laughs> and in front of people, mm -hmm. showing them what I've got, and then I try to push my merch on them really hard. Eyeballs, yeah. Eyeballs and merch, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that's what I thought. That's what I figured. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> anything anything yeah no i was just letting you because you were on a nice little roll there i have well, a bunch of questions I actually wrote some more while we were sitting here uh, so talking about uh the coronavirus uh what's the status on the upcoming show up in uh or down in florida so they just put out um it, it's the ninth annual barley republic st patrick's day festival whiskey that has been playing it for the last i don't even know how many years um we've been there a lot they love us down there we love them and uh, we've all been looking forward to this gig because Whiskey the Dam kind of slowed down a little bit with myself and Owen both having solo projects and, and being very heavily invested into those. Mm -hmm. um, they just put out a post saying that as of now, they're planning to move forward uh, with it. So it hasn't been canceled. Um, they did arrange for more hand sanitizing stations and uh, more staff to go around cleaning everything. So they're just going to wipe everything down. Mm -hmm. You know, so if there's a table that somebody's leaning on, when that person leaves, they're going to go, you know, right up to it, yeah. rub it down. Yeah. Which, you know, I'm, I'm good, you know. Yeah, any any way to make it work. Just don't, don't cancel, cancel the show, please. Just don't cancel the show, dude. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so far, they're being troopers about it. But th that's the thing. Everything is so fluid. It's um, day to day. To, yeah, it's, it's really day to day. You know, you don't know the state of things until the morning of. You look and you just cross your fingers. Yeah. So now, how's that? Oh, sorry, sorry buddy. No, 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 I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, man. You're sorry. I'm sorry. I'm All sorry. right. So, how is that uh, making you feel about the the future of your upcoming shows after this weekend? Like, are you starting to kind of get worried because um, so many things are bit. being canceled and pushed back? And yeah, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried about it. I'll I'll find a way to adapt. You know, that's kind of my whole thing. <laughs> but uh, it's part of the gig. you know, if I have to pick up another temp job and let this blow over, that'd be fine. Temp jobs are great. You know, yeah. sometimes I'll just pop into an office, be like, "Hey, do you got work I can do for like two weeks?" and I'll do it. And guess what? For those two weeks, you'd be the superstar of the fucking office because that's what <laughs> that temp is a touring artist. <laughs> right? I bet. Yeah, for real, man. You need a little bit of work, man. Come to the pizza shop. I'll hook you up. <laughs> right on. <laughs> you some hours, bud. Yeah, right. You can fucking you work my shifts, man. This is probably the most. You stress kids, you'd be good. This is probably right, right. even, man. We'll just sit there and drink beers. And... <laughs> this is the most fun job interview ever, but... <laughs> Dude, you're already hired, bud. <laughs> right on. I'll see there you go. Um, but, yeah, I, I was getting really frustrated, as I mentioned to you before I was going in here, because I was going through my emails, and uh, the biggest thing with this uh, COVID-19 scare, it's just the, the fear of everything. Um, you have people all the way out in uh, April, May, June that are not sure what's going to go on. Yeah. It's like, you guys, it, it's going to be fine. It, you know, it'll fine is a saying that my friend Sam taught me a while ago. Fine. It'll fine. <laughs> we'll out, it'll fine. Yeah. It, it's um, just fucking relax. But, uh, R E L A X. With them, uh, with, <laughs> with them not uh, being sure, it's really hard to confirm uh, dates and getting contracts worked yeah. out. So you, you have to add into your contracts like a cancellation clause, you know, like, and you have to like update it, you know, to say like, you know, pandemics, you know, as part of yeah. what might happen. <laughs> but yeah, like, it's just so right. Weird. And now it's going really forward, weird. you have to do that. Now yeah, going like, forward. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, book with a deposit, book with a deposit. It's really hard to get somebody to deposit money to you on a show that they don't know is going to happen. Right. So a lot of, uh, like, independent artists are struggling. I'm seeing it from all my musician friends on Facebook, all the touring artists. Uh, Gina Romantini, who uh, used to play with Whiskey the Damned, 
she had a bunch of label showcases at South by Southwest. A lot of time and money goes into those. And now they're not happening, just straight up not happening. So it's just like all that time and money is for nothing. Yeah. Out the fucking window. So God it's damn, it's it's rough right scary. now, man. It really that's, is. That's <laughs> scary, dude. That is fucking scary to me. So getting back to this uh, riveting interview. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, man. All right. So, oh yeah, my bad. Yeah, it's your turn. Uh, so let's just let's. Let's, 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 let's switch it up. Uh, so it's going to be kind of uh, like a rapid fire kind of thing. Uh, we'll start with, what's your favorite venue? It can be anywhere. Not, not, not just locally. That's a touring <laughs> That's, That's a, uh, well, right. I'm interested. Well, so I've got a, I've got a few, and uh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that this is unbiased, even though I've worked there since it opened. But Walker's Point Music Hall uh, here in Milwaukee is doing some pretty great things. And it's come a really long way for only being open a year. Um, I'm starting to see some really cool shows there of bands from all different backgrounds. Um, you know, you'll have hip hop night one night and then it'll be reggae the next day. Um, Where's this located? In Walker's Point. And uh, also Milwaukee. let it be known that you do the sound. <laughs> I, I do the like, sound there a lot. He's, he's not just there just drinking beers like this is a good place. <laughs> no, no, no. He's doing the sound at these, yeah. at these shows. But I, so. so I know it's a good place cause on nights that I'm not working, I'll go there. Mm. And that, that's what tells me that it's a good yeah. Okay. It piques your interest, yeah. So, uh, what's your favorite spot to eat at? I know we had, Chris had said that he likes going to Camino. Of course. Which Camino is got good, some Again, damn bias, good food. Bias. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> my favorite place to eat, and you said it can be anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah anywhere, man. Anywhere. Uh, there's a place called Daryl's. It's a sandwich shop in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Mm. And, like, I, uh... This, the entire state of Louisiana knows how to cook. Dude. It's amazing. I book my tours place. around food entirely. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Like, there's a spot that I play in Indianapolis all the time that treats me really, really well. Um, they're called O'Brien's Nine Irish Brothers. They have awesome, awesome pepper steak. Like, it's out of this world good. And a really, really good pork tenderloin. I'm starting to get really hungry thinking about it. O'Brien's what? O'Brien's Nine Irish Brothers. So it's like an Irish restaurant... Um, but the thing is, there are three locations. Uh, they all three used to be owned by the same family until one of the managers bought his out, and now he's doing more of a music venue thing with it because uh, a lot of his staff were getting kind of tired of having Irish music in there every night. You know, the same three Irish tunes just played over and over again for four hours. <laughs> what is that? Almost Heroes. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. So it got when Whiskey the Dam would go down there, the staff would get really happy because we were playing a bunch of thrash metal and a bunch. You know, we were mixing. We did Just the Celtic thing, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but we did other stuff too, and that kind of gave him the idea. Hey, I want to keep this up. So uh, there's like another local musician. Her name is Andy Heath. She does like R and B kind of funky thing. Mm. Um, now he wants to get her down there. He's like totally obsessed with her most recent record which is called what i'm good at which is on bandcamp um so if you go on bandcamp.com search andy with two eyes a-n-d-i-i -I. um she's got a record called what i'm good at anyway the manager well now owner of that o'brien's in uh, indianapolis is obsessed with her record so he wants her down there and he that's wants fantastic. to bring in all sorts of genres that's fantastic that's cool. hell yeah man that's that. super cool you know that's that's one thing <clears throat> uh, you know, I, it's our niche, my niche in being in the metal market that, you know, it's weird because that's not an acquired taste, but like, I, I, all of your songs are very pop. Well, not pop, but they're very mainstream. You know what I mean? Yeah. I they're palatable. Them. Exactly. Exactly. So it's really amazing how just real quick, like you go do shows here and it's just like, yeah, you shouldn't. We're gonna bring her with, and then yeah. Star Wipe a year later. Now they're like fawning for this fucking act, and it's just like, dude, you're you don't even realize it, but you're like making that kind of like history. Where we we've got a pretty solid say, network going on countrywide. I mean, I spent the last eight and a half years playing in forty six states. That there you go. Wow. That's what I'm saying. So that's it's exactly you know, anytime I'm talking, I'm talking to these venue owners, I say, hey, you got to get this person in here, and I usually recruit people from home that I know want to tour. And they'll listen to you. That's yeah. fantastic. That's fantastic. I'm sorry to cut you off. Mike. No, man, that's fine. Uh, so let's talk outside the music world here. Everybody has something they like to nerd out about. 
Guilty pleasure. Yeah, something they like to just, you know, me time. Don't talk about any to anybody. <laughs> what is your uh, what is your nerd time or your guilty pleasure? What would you say is your... I love comics, as I mentioned a little bit with the Emory Wars earlier. Um, but, like, I started reading this comic called The Freeze. And I don't know if it's canceled. I, I usually arrive late to the party with everything. <laughs> but uh, I'm like four issues in, and somebody told me they heard this thing got canceled. I hope not, because I'm really, really hooked on it. Mm. Um, so I got to look into that. But it's a, it's a comic called The Freeze that I just started uh, diving into. Um, I love, like, I love superheroes. I, I love uh, fantasy worlds. Hell you know, yeah. that I love escaping reality Hell is what yeah. I love Fuck doing. Yeah. <laughs> So I use yeah. I use comics to do that because I think it's a perfect bridge between reading a book and watching television. You know, you got some art to kind of put you into the world, and you can see what things look like um, visually it's right in front of you. But you have to fill in the gaps because it is a written uh, dialogue Media, that you have yeah. to follow. So like, it's like the best of both worlds. I think it's right between television mm -hmm. and reading. Yeah, it gives you the visuals, and then you fill in the gaps with yeah. your imagination. So yeah, it, it allows for, sure. for a lot of imagining, but you get to see somebody else's vision and you get to kind of expand on it with your own mind, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, the interpretations of the so then now, storyline. Alright, so knowing that you like the the fantasy world, have you ever looked into the world of steampunk? Uh, not extensively. I have some friends um, that are really into it, and I've, I've, uh, I've been meaning to, but you know, like, I, I tend to get busy with things and, yeah. mm -hmm. and forget to check things out, even if it's something that really piques my interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I get around to it eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that world. It's so. It's so what? Oh, I'm sorry that you're saying that's. Uh... These are cues that you have to ignore while we're recording. <laughs> Be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Smart. So, anyways. Uh, it, Andrew, if there's one message, one message you could uh, you could give to your fans right now, what would it be? Um. Well, I've been pretty uh, heavy on the support local lately, um, and not just music. I mean, local business, um, you know, a lot of restaurants are struggling right now. Uh, I saw somebody posted out there that what you should do is go buy a gift certificate so that the money goes right to them for their use. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, once this all blows over, go treat yourself or a date to a nice meal. And I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, West Bend, Wisconsin is where I kind of grew up. And uh, everybody always, you know, when they, when they brag about the history of that town, and I guess it is something to brag about, they always mention how it um, has been largely depression and recession proof because it's got a tight knit network of local businesses uh, that have thrived and supported each other mm -hmm. through really hard times. Like through the Great Depression, you had all these businesses and they were really tight knit and really close together and you had people shopping at all of them telling their friends, you know. And that's still possible. I mean, obviously everything is on a very large scale these days. But it can be pretty tempting when you go online and you see a pair of shoes on Amazon for $20 cheaper than at the, the local shoe store. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the fact that you can get them in your size in two days. But I think what's missing there is the connection and the experience of actually shopping at that store. You know, am I a person that always shops local? No, sometimes a deal comes along and I'm pretty broke. So, you know, like... Yeah. You know, do way. I go to the guitar center once in a while to buy a cymbal? Yes. Um, you know, do I go to Amazon and buy a pair of shoes once in a while? Yes. I prefer to buy them at Nick Cavani in uh, Mayfair Mall, mm -hmm. um, which is where most of my ridiculous stage outfits are from. God, you're <laughs> so fucking good, though, dude. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, I did. Normally we have pictures, I have pictures of, like, for you to explain, but I, I have got to post a couple of pictures of this guy's fucking stage outfits. <sighs> Showman. Showman. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to catch up. But, uh, yeah, uh, to, to just to expand upon that, you know, when I say support local, I don't mean just music. I mm -hmm. mean, even your local grocery store, you know. Mm -hmm. It means something. Um, it really does. You know, if you can go to your local grocery shop over the Walmart, do it. Yeah. You know, if, if that tomato costs 35 cents more, you're helping somebody directly close to you. You need, like, to have that tight-knit, recession-proof, depression-proof, uh, neighborhood you need to actually keep things local to your neighborhood yeah you know so if you can avoid doing the corporate thing they're just fine without you 
<laughs> like, yeah, you know, like, exactly, exactly. And if they start to suffer, it's not near the suffering that that guy that owns that local grocery is going to endure. A little bit. You know, they can always restructure and do do things like that. But you know, your your local grocer can't do that. So. Yeah. Um. So what's next? What's next, buddy? I have a record. Um. That's almost ready to come out, and hopefully, I don't have to keep pushing it back due to this craziness. Yeah. Um, the rec the record's all done, um, except for it. Well, it's in the mixing stage. I should say that it's all recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being mixed and mastered now. Um, I will have a single out by the end of this month. Um, I've, I've actually already got one single for the record out. I put it out last <laughs> month. Gray. Yeah, that that's the one. <laughs> it's Battlesuit Gray. And it's available for uh, streaming and download pretty much everywhere. It's Googleable. I'm Googleable now. You can Google Andrew David Weber. Tells you I'm a musical artist, which means I've conned the internet successfully. Which is pretty good. <laughs> um, <laughs> that dude, that literally. It was the look up that like, sold it too. <laughs> what you don't understand is that, like, you've worked for that look up. Like, motherfucker, yeah. go ahead and check it, bitch. That was. <laughs> hey, I, no, hey, I got sold. For real. That was nice. Yeah. For real. That's so cool. But, uh, so I, I have a. Uh, I actually haven't told anybody what the next single is called. I guess I'll, I'll tell you guys. Uh, this DMC podcast, right? exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next song is called How Bad Could It Get It's um, okay. it features Thea Voris who plays in uh, The Bellwether amongst other bands um, in Wisconsin she plays cello and I play acoustic guitar and sing we did it very bare bones I recorded all the acoustic and vocal uh, in you know live takes we did like three of them chose the best stuff and then uh, had her track cello over it mm -hmm. um I'm going to release that probably within the next two weeks. Um, I just have to make sure that everything is working with, you know, publishing and licensing. Some of that stuff takes a little while, so yeah, I don't yeah. have an exact date. Mm -hmm. But the, the goal is here, I put out uh, Battleship Grey last month. I want to put out this single this month. And then the next single, which I'll go ahead and just tell you guys what Dude, that's going to be, Is it going to be the one you showed me? Yeah. Yes! It's going to be It's going to be called The Howl, and it features Bill House on guitar, uh, Matt Schutz on guitar, and Andy Martin from Condition on Drums. Oh, and this song is so good! <laughs> that, dude, I heard it. I heard it last week we, uh, at the Zor show. Uh, it's He played it over the house, and it was so good, dude. It's so good. Yeah, it's a it's benefit so or a perk to working there is like yeah. I can uh, you put my mixes into their that system. That's <laughs> in my notes. I'm going to get there. Uh, dude, that song, that song is going to be the shit. I can't wait for that one to come out. I appreciate um, that. Obviously... <clears throat> check out Battleship Gray. Uh, go to cdbaby.com. Fucking, again, support local music. This guy's put a lot of time and effort into this music. Go spend a dollar. Download the song. It will definitely be worth the uh, the 99 cents that you're going to have to pay. Again, it's available at um, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Google, um, Deezer. I don't know what Deezer it, is. I didn't know what Deezer is either. Actually, oh, I recently found out that my music is on TikTok. <laughs> and I, I had to have a child explain to me what TikTok oh, no. was. I saw that on your page. Uh, Andrew, do everything you can to pull it from TikTok. No, nah, man, I'll take it. <laughs> that's an entirely new audience, my friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my son spends that's, a lot of well, time that's, that's on the thing. TikTok. I, I don't have a lot of avenues that reach the, the younger listeners. Yeah. And hey, man, they had their parents' yeah. money, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even knock that. I can't. <laughs> oh no, yeah, absolutely. Um, people, would, people would say, you know, that's a sellout thing to say, but it's like we, we always used to call people sellouts when we were in high school, and then we had to start paying rent. Oh, yeah, I got <laughs> now I'm like exactly. I got now when I see a song in a commercial, I'm super happy for that person for putting that song <laughs> yeah, in that commercial. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh my god, they've probably paid their phone bill this month. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> barely, barely. Right, and still barely. People think it's barely. like this big money making thing. Like, really yeah, you make something off of it, but yeah, they, but they probably yeah. paid. They probably managed to pay their phone bill. Yeah. So, I musicianship. It feels like to me is like it's a constant gamble. On yourself which like I have the utmost confidence in myself and like obviously your track record proves your confidence in yourself it's just we're just waiting we're just waiting, <laughs> wait for it and boom and then it just it takes literally that that fast yep. of a second that much of a decision to uh, to completely change the demographic and you sir are well on your fucking way because you you just you you're really talented, Andrew. Thanks, man. Really very, really very talented, and I envy you because you can do so much shit musically. 
and the fact that you're trying to strike it out on your own and you're you're fucking killing it, uh, that that speaks volumes as to your actual ability and your character, man. So uh, on that note, you can check out Andrew here at the uh, Walker's Point Music Hall every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Um, so. We're actually alternating now, um, so it'll be like every third Wednesday. Every third Wednesday. Um, but I, I'll still go to as many as I can if I'm not on the road. So, uh, okay. it's, yeah, no, no, yeah, you're Andy Heath on is road. one of the hosts, uh, Brennan Demon is another one, and then me. So yeah. we just, we all alternate. Okay, okay. So uh, you can catch Andrew here every third, uh, every third Wednesday of the month at Walker's Point Music Hall hosting the open mic. Um, again, check out Battleship Gray. Go to cdbaby.com, Andrew David Weber uh, in the uh, search window, buddy, red carpet, anything else you want to uh, promote, throw out there for the people? Um, well, I guess uh, just follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, my Instagram handle is Andrew David Weber first, one ST, uh, not spelled out. And uh, you, you'll kind of see where I'm going with some things. I've got a lot of... Can uh, a lot of uh, projects going on right now mm -hmm. and uh whiskey of the damned has a live record that we're working on so you know there'll be updates about that mm -hmm. on those pages i just recorded a live album at walker's point music hall mm -hmm. um that's going to be in the mixing stage coming up here uh the howl of insanity is well on its way um it's gonna be so good <laughs> thanks man i appreciate right, that um, but yeah, so just, uh, follow me on social media. I do have a Snapchat. People always ask me about Snapchat because I guess that's still a big thing with people. Mm -hmm. My Snapchat it, the chat is not very, uh, musically oriented. It's, uh, more it's like silly. pictures of my dog. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my dong. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, who knows what you get on there. What's the handle? That's yeah, what's the handle, handle bud? That's, my, that's my premium Snapchat. Ah, that's anyway. premium. All right. Um, All right. Oh, my God. I'm going to get a fans only. Anyway. Do it. Do I it. should. I should get a fans only. That's a, that's a fucking corner of the market that I haven't really thought of until God. just now. Um, anyway, the handle for that is Andre the Average. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, but when you get the premium, you'll see he's above average. Oh, snap. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> uh, <that's funny>. wow. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, Andrew, thank you for fucking making the, making the trip over here. Thank yeah, you of course. Hang out for a little bit. And thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, until next time, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, obviously, in light of the situation, I've said it once. I'll say it fucking again and again and again. Wash your hands. I love you, buddy. I right, thank you. I'm, yeah, I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love ones. <laughs> oh. Produced by the Dankmar.